The Look episode that. that we are about to do. Live I, I, don't, I don't think we can pre- I don't think we can prepare you guys for it. Mm-hmm. It's mind blowing. It literally is mind blowing. This is one of the most exciting things I have been a part of ever in my whole life. Um, and yeah, I, uh, man, where do I? I don't even know where to begin. <laughs> um, okay, so I'm trying to get this shared right now, and mm-hmm. I'm, the still, opposite, I'm in that process too. Yeah, and the opposite of uh, artificial intelligence is Facebook. <laughs> um, so we're kind of stuck in a loop right now. Um, I'm gonna close this out. We're gonna try. There we go. All right, we're gonna try on a different one. Anyway, what we are talking about in case you haven't seen it on the description already um is artificial or yeah artificial intelligence but communication ai Mm -hmm. right conversation Mm -hmm. ai um language model yes um so what's up darian we on that notification gang yeah so okay we got it shared we are now live so here's what we're talking about this week um I, this, is, this is absolutely crazy. This program, Denison just took turned me on to it, right? Actually, hold up. Let me start recording. Let me start recording. I'm getting ahead of myself. I'm getting excited, man. Mm-hmm. I know. I mean, it, it is exciting by itself. It, it is. Freaking excited. Here we go. <laughs> all right. All right. Get excited. There we go. All right. Three, two, one. All right. What we're talking about this week, this is I, – I haven't been – this is excited about technology since <clears throat> I genuinely can't tell you when. Mm-hmm. This is called um, Chat GPT. Mm-hmm. It's by oh, OpenAI. It's by OpenAI, which is uh, an investment um, from uh, Elon Musk, among others. Okay. Mm-hmm. And so uh, to give you the groundwork first, this AI um, learned from the internet up until 2021 right mm-hmm. um and uh let's see my, my or or it wasn't on the internet i should say per se but it was it was more along the lines of researchers ai trainers had been feeding it different information from the internet uh so that way it could learn how to develop more natural speak uh speaking patterns as well as like I guess I shouldn't say speaking patterns, but language patterns um, yeah. in language models because it is a language model. I think that's sure. one of the biggest things too. It's a it's a language model. Where um, did it learn? Where did it learn all of the things that it knows? Because the breadth of knowledge, we haven't even scratched the surface on the breadth of knowledge this thing has. Well, okay. So according according to um, OpenAI's uh, web page, their FAQ page for the deal um it has limited knowledge of world events um and a couple of other things so it's just fed stuff different things throughout the internet that it's just been fed uh and learned and, or in, and it would use that to train itself to get better um yeah. so that's pretty much it there's not specific sources it's just kind of all over okay um so that there you go it's learned, and we, like I said, we haven't even scratched the surface. What have we done, man? We, uh, Denison has <clears throat> had it code. It's done some coding. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I had it write an entire blog post that fit the length requirement I asked and gave it a title, and it was able to search engine optimize the blog post mm-hmm. all by me just giving it the prompts. What I want, you know, it was very minimal, like one cents, two cents prompts. Um, I just had it reword "Twinkle Twinkle Little Star" in the style of Eminem, and oh. Metallica, and Snoop mm-hmm. Dogg, and Drake, and it was all accurate. Um, and and actually, if you're watching this, or even if you're listening to this, if you're not on the live stream right now, but you're listening to the audio version, the description and the title were written by this AI, mm-hmm. and I asked it to make it preferable for search engine optimization. So everything you have in here, even, and we'll show you this too, our talking points today were drafted by the AI. 
And there's a reason for this. The reason is, first of all, we feel like we relate to it. Everything that this thing has written for me so far, as far as content, feels like it's in my voice. And that's what's amazing about it. Mm -hmm. Um, And so we are using this to guide. We're using this product to guide the conversation about this product, right? Yeah, exactly. I mean, hey, what better way to talk about a product than the product telling us, how to talk about the product. I mean, exactly. it's exactly. it's pretty crazy, right? It's crazy that we were even at a, at a point in general that we can even talk about something like this or even say anything about this because it's, it's you know, I, I think we might have talked about this earlier, you know, you know, in, in an earlier podcast, um, just kind of because it's been around for a little bit of time. Um, but it's just been getting trained more and more and more. And it was just kind of showing just how advanced AI has become and, or at least some versions of AI, right. You know, I think, um, earlier, uh, this week, I would say there's been a huge influx of people using an AI model, right. That is creating arts, uh, works of art, right. Of people's photos and stuff like that, which is really, really cool. Um, <clears throat> And then there's also uh, an AI model that's also by OpenAI that's called Dolly, right? And it's able to generate really realistic um, images yeah, uh, from just word prompts. Right. Yes. And, and unfortunately, I think that that is where largely a lot of AI usage is going to go is for mm-hmm. that kind of stuff. So people can post it on Instagram and get their cloud up. But there is so much usage for this. I looked at how to convert the rear drum brakes on my 2011 pickup into disc brakes. And it told me a step-by-step process and then suggested mm-hmm. I follow a service manual and get professional assistance with it. Yeah. Um, yeah. I asked I, it how to buy a home. Yep. And, and it, it, it went through step that step-by-step step. Step process of yes. how to do it. Um, yes. And it even gave me encouragement at the end, which is yes. crazy. Right. Yes. Actually, I'm going to I'm going to read it just right. Exactly what it says at the end. It says buying a home um, or yeah, sorry, buying a house can be a complex and time consuming process. But with the right planning and uh, preparation, you can make it a successful and rewarding experience. Like that's not even like that. That's it's this. You know, it it makes the situation so much more. um you know, sure. It gives me like this huge, you know, long lengthy process, but then it also gives me words of encouragement, which feels human, right? That's how a human would write that. Not how, like what we would um, normally imagine as a, um, as a robot writing it. Right. 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 Exactly. So, um, I mean, ask, if you're on the live stream, Mm -hmm. ask us questions to ask this AI. Ask Mm -hmm. anything you want to know, whatever you want to know. If you have any questions about process, you want to learn how to do something. Like I said, it helped Dennis encode something. It Mm -hmm. could literally help me build a website. There's all kinds of insane things. The title and the description of this uh, podcast. You know what? Once we get uploaded, I'm even going to look at what search tags to use. (laughs) This podcast will guide us. and, um, And it has formatted this show. Again, the talking points, we're going to dive mm-hmm. into those. But right now, if you're on the live stream, let us know what you want us to ask this AI. It's the absolute, it's like I said earlier, it's more human than a lot of humans. And not, mm-hmm. I don't mean that in a creepy way. I mean, this is the level of personable that a friend is. You know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. Or a, a, a tr- probably more accurately, a trustworthy source, right? Yeah. Exactly. <clears throat> so let us go ahead and jump right into it man let's just keep rolling with it man yeah man let's do it this is pretty amazing yeah okay so three two one what's going on everybody i'm john and i'm dennison and this is the ketchup man you really peaked the mic on that one bro (laughs) everybody watching at home's like (laughs) <laughs> the hair's like flapping in the wind. Yeah. Um, <laughs> all right, here we go. Three, two, one. Before we dive in more on this topic, uh, the AI did not tell us to do this, but we want to let you know 
the three best ways to support our podcast. Number one, leave us a rating and review and subscribe if you like us. No matter where you're listening, no matter where you're watching, there is a way, whether it's hitting the follow button on Facebook, subscribing and liking on YouTube, um, or just going in and uh, leaving a rating and review on whatever audio platform you're listening on. That helps us every time you do that. It helps put us out in front of a larger audience and helps us continue to grow, which speaking of that, we have been gaining an audience lately, um, mm-hmm. especially on the Facebook page. So thank you to all of you jumping on and, uh, and subscribing for the first time. We're glad to have you and uh, we're excited for you to catch up with us. Number two, man, what is number two, man? Oh man. Oh, you're blanking. that's right. Oh uh, no, I, I've done this so many times. It's just kind of like <laughs> I actually kind of black out when I say it sometimes. <laughs> you go on uh, autopilot. Yeah. So number two, we said rating and review for number one. Oh man. Oh gosh. Oh oh wow. Oh, jump on the live stream. Probably oh, because we're doing it right now. I just didn't even think about it. Jump on the live stream and you can have these conversations with us in real time. Mm-hmm. Whatever you want to talk about. Um But you can also let your voice be heard on topics, especially the interesting topics like this, where we're literally being guided by an artificial intelligence in this discussion to make Mm -hmm. it the best possible podcast for you. So we'd love to hear your voice and your thoughts in real time. So jump on our Facebook page, jump on our YouTube, um, just search our podcast page and subscribe. And uh, we go live every Thursday night. So it'll be a, a fun way to get involved with all of you. Number three. This one I remember. Go to our shop, um, and uh, if you want to support us financially, you can get any of the good, clean merch at a good, clean price. We have shirts, hoodies, beanies, hats, and recently the shop had disconnected. I just reconnected it. So we're back. We're good to go. So uh, if you want to support us in a monetary way, go on there and get you some merch, man. Mm -hmm. Um, So with that said, uh let's let's jump into this here i'm going to show my screen so you can see here Mm -hmm. um actually you know what let me let me do this a little bit better way i want to share the tab so there's not all that mess up at the top um it would be this one here we go okay um so uh let's take a look here we have the topics that are formulating this episode of the podcast, right? Mm-hmm. Can you come up. All I said was, can you come up with some podcast talking points about chat GPT? Now, let me, let me scroll back here. I'm going to give you some backstory. <laughs> that was a funny one, <laughs> but <laughs> okay, actually, you know what? I, so I didn't mean to pull this one up, but check this out. Mm. Can you give dating advice? I said it as a joke because I was like, well, it's not a human. So no way can it. Right. Mm-hmm. It said, I'm not able to give personalized dating advice as I'm a large language model trained by open AI and do not have the ability to access information about your specific situation or preferences. However, here are some general pieces of dating advice that may be helpful. And it goes on, a, a, what was that? Five bullet points, mm-hmm. but they're not just bullet points. It says, be yourself. But then it also says it's important to be genuine and authentic when it comes to dating Don't try to be someone you're not in order to impress someone else. That's just the first bullet point, man. Mm -hmm. So anyway, I'll spare the time on that. It gives great advice on that. And these are, I'm sharing this just to give you an idea of the scope of which this thing works, which there is no limit, it seems. Mm -hmm. Um, So said, write a podcast episode description about chat GPT. This formulated the episode description you see on the live stream. But then I said, can you adjust this? We won't be speaking to any experts or users because it did say uh, we'll talk to the experts at OpenAI about how chat GPT works. Would love to. If you mm-hmm. guys want to come on the show and you see this, we'd love to have you on. Exactly. Um, yeah, we're but, very, very excited about this. So, you know, love yeah. to have that interview. That would be amazing. It would be absolutely incredible. So I, I said we won't be speaking to any experts or users. Only hosts will be speaking. And it adjusted it. And it says, we'll discuss how, jet, how chat GPT works and its potential uses in various applications. It get, you can see here on the live stream, it gave us two paragraphs. And if you're reading this or if you're listening to this, 
you saw in the pod uh, cast episode description. It was written by this AI. <clears throat> so then I said, well, why not use this as a guidepost for the episode? So I went down here and said, can you come up with some podcast talking points about chat GPT? And it says, here are some possible talking points for a podcast about chat GPT. And that is exactly what we're following for this podcast right now. This AI mm -hmm. <clears throat> told us how to do this. So um, I'm going to type down here. It seems like something Elon Musk would do in a, in a presentation, I feel like. I'm going to type <laughs> here. Um, uh, what are some ways to keep a live stream audio, uh podcast audience engaged right mm -hmm. now let me scroll down to the bottom so you can see how this process works um boom type it in here mm -hmm. it's thinking it's thinking it wasn't thinking this much earlier but it's probably getting used more now yeah yeah exactly as Here's it gets what... used more it, it gets a little bit more uh sometimes it takes a little bit longer sure so here you go there are several ways to keep a live stream podcast audience engaged, including interacting with the audience, encourage audience participation by asking questions, taking polls and responding to comments and questions in real time. Check one. We're doing pretty well. So far. Uh -huh, I think so. Uh, <laughs> uh, number two, providing value, offer valuable information, insights or entertainment that keeps the audience interested and engaged in the topic at hand. I think we're doing all right. Mm -hmm. Um, being authentic and engaging, be yourself and show your personality, humor, and passion for the topic. This can help build a connection with the audience and keep them engaged. We've been doing that for years. <laughs> I know. I know. From the start, really. <laughs> yeah, right. Using visual aids, which is literally what we're doing right now. Use mm -hmm. images, videos, slides, or other visual aids to enhance the content and keep the audience engaged. Number five, varying the pace and format. Mix up the pace and format of the live stream to keep things interesting and prevent boredom. Mm, this can include changing the topic, bringing in guests, or using different formats such as interviews, panel discussions, or Q&A sessions. And number six, promoting the live stream. Use social media and off other marketing channels to promote the live stream and attract an audience. This can include posting about the live stream in advance, sharing updates during the live stream, and encouraging viewers to share their live stream with their networks. So that is all exceptional advice. Here's the thing. Mm -hmm. Anything that we've asked for that has been con really, well, all my questions like this have been content related. Mm -hmm. It's not just the bare minimum. It's actual genuine good advice. And it is everything you need to know to be successful at that. Yep, it's mind exactly. blowing. Yep. It's and it's blowing. super nice and trimmed. Uh, like you're not getting, that's the thing, right? I guess that's one of the biggest things too, that I, I thought about too, or that we both kind of discussed when we were playing around with this is that it's, it's not like Google, right? <clears throat> Google will get you these same answers, but sometimes you have to do a little bit. You have to pull them a little bit more. You have to do your own little data mining to find out exactly what you want or whatever like that, but you'll usually get to the same conclusion. This just spits <clears throat> it out automatically right? It spits it out automatically. There's no fluff. There's no any uh, issues like that. And it's just coming off of what it, what it already knows. Right. Yeah. Like it's, it's, it's really, really amazing. And the biggest thing too, that I think we both are, I mean, you already talked about too, John, and you kind of showed it off, but is that it's so, but it's in that conversational flow. So yeah. you can literally talk about one thing uh, and say like, Hey, can you change it to this? Right. Like, I think we even, uh, you know, you were saying that, um, uh, you know, how, how we changed like the description, right. How we needed to morph it, morph it and kind of massage it into exactly how we wanted it to be. Yeah. Um, but I mean, you can do that on even higher, higher scale. I know what, earlier when I was playing with this, I had it write like a love story, right? But then I said, hey, can you add this? Can you add that? And then it went in and rewrote the love story and added those new elements and actually made it a part of the whole story that it created. So it's yeah. it's just that smart, right? It's just that smart and it understands <laughs> the context. I think that's one of the biggest things that a lot of people don't understand about the... Um, the artificial intelligence, I guess, that we interact with um, on a day-to-day -day basis, right? 
like yeah. your Google and your Siri and your Alexa, those are things they're good and they've gotten better over time, especially, you know, um, all of them have just gotten way better um, sure. from when they first started. But like being this conversational, I think is the biggest thing that all of them have challenges with. I would say sometimes Google is really good at that, uh, at, you know, keeping up with it. But uh, I was just trying to make sure my Google didn't, try to turn on <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah 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 um but that's that itself is crazy right it, yeah. it's just that understanding that understanding of context that human language portion that is hard for anybody yeah especially yeah. uh artificial <laughs> intelligence or assistance or something similar to that yes so here, here's uh, where now we gotta follow these AI guideposts, man. Mm -hmm. <laughs> for, right, for the, right, we do. Yeah, for the topic conversation. Um, I did just ask it can't convert file types. It says, "I'm sorry, but I'm a text-based language model and do not have the ability to convert file types." Obviously, I knew this, but uh, it says I can provide information and guidance on how to convert file types, but I cannot perform the conversion myself. To convert a file from one type to another, you will need to use specialized software or online tools that are designed for this purpose. There are many options available, and the specific steps for converting a file will depend on the type of file you're converting, the tool you're using. Just the voice. And this this is part of us giving the basics, but it's the voice mm -hmm. of it. It's so informative. Mm -hmm. um, like you mentioned, encouraging. Uh, it comes off as an expert in the field of everything. Mm -hmm. and and like you said confidence and of course that over exuberance of confidence can bite itself in the butt when it's not right exactly but um but however this is this is amazing so one of the questions that we got hit in this first bullet point right off the bat again mm -hmm. these bullet points that the ai suggested we we use um what sets this apart from other conversational ai technologies uh you know i think one of the biggest things that sets it apart is just how advanced it is in the regard of kind of like what we were already talking about human speech right yeah understanding <laughs> human cadence um and understanding how to present information to where it's not so um choppy yeah Right. It's not so choppy. It's it's very much, you know, it's very emphatic. Sometimes, because I, I do feel like some language models or some AIs uh, struggle with the process of creating content that sounds believable, mm -hmm. right? It's very choppy. It's There's like word or there may not be grammar, grammar mistakes, but it's contextual mistakes of like, this doesn't make any sense. This just doesn't make yeah. any sense. And not saying that this doesn't do that, but it does. And it does. There are certain times where it can get a little uh, confused or whatever like that. But sure. for the most part, I think that's where it really shines. Yeah. At least from ones that I've seen, right? Um, the fact that it, it can, it can, anything that is language based almost really, that it can figure out. You know, the fact yeah. that um, where I, I think that's the other thing, I feel like a lot of AI models or chat AI models are very much specific, right? They're specific on regular conversations or, or they're specific on um, like research stuff or whatever yeah. this or, or, or it'll be code or whatever like this, this can do all. It's yeah. everything, right? You know, like you said earlier, I was able to put in, um, I had it help me with some PowerShell stuff so that yeah. I could just kind of get a better understanding of like one thing that I had wrong in something. And it was able to kind of teach me how to do that. It's like, oh, hey, I see what you did here. Let's let's figure this out. Sure. It can help you troubleshoot. Like I mentioned, um, <clears throat> it helped me uh, learn what I could do actually gave me a step-by-step -step process specific to my pickup on how to replace a door handle. Mm -hmm. um, not that I need that information, but, um, but again, if you're in the live stream, <clears throat> give us a prompt for this AI and we will show you. It can be, make it as challenging as you want or, or mm -hmm. really just 
and, and, and I, I guess I would suggest try to make it something genuine to you that you really want to know. Yeah. Um, but yeah. And we'll, I'll put it in uh, over here. Um, so I think the next question to ask mm -hmm. uh, and actually, you know, let's, uh, let's, let's consult the, consult yeah, the talking points, you know? I, well, yeah, I'm consulting the AI generated talking points for this specific um, episode of the podcast, of course. But uh, pulling this back up, um, so the potential application, uh, you know, a lot of people are probably listening to this and they're thinking, you know, that's cool. That's great. I'm happy to hear that. But mm -hmm. um, what does this mean for me? What is, what is the purpose of having an AI that can have these conversations back and forth with this? what how is this going to benefit me right mm -hmm. so what would your answer that be i have a couple answers um off the bat the ai actually suggested yeah um language translation okay yeah, yeah. <clears throat> so so let's let's try that okay okay um can you convert the following sentence into spanish I'm very hungry and my car whoops has no gas in it. Can you get me some food? <laughs> Let's see where this go. Tengo mucha hambre uh y mi coche no tiene gasolina. Puedes conseguirme algo de comida. So it did translate it. Mm -hmm. It did translate it. Um, can you convert this to what's something I can pronounce uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, into Latin, I guess. Let's mm. try that. Um, and there you go. I can't pronounce that. I'm not even going to try it, but there you are it is translated into Latin. Now, all I said is, can you convert this to Latin? It mm -hmm. knew what this was. Yep. And yep. It, it's that, that big context right there. Right. If you were to do that for other models, they would have, they would struggle because you, they would be like, we need to be more specific. I don't know what you're talking about. That That is the thing. And actually I was thinking about this earlier. What separates it in addition to what you were saying from other models is that um, you can – well, oftentimes, if you ask a question, it's going to give you like, well, do you mean this? Are you referring to this? Are you mm -hmm. talking about this? And a lot of those other models, to me, are con uh, connected to the internet, you yep. know? And I think it almost confuses them, you yep. know? Because they – it's almost like, you know, they they go to find your answer for you in Google and they see all the other suggested searches and they're like, oh, what do I do now? You know what I mean? Um, mm -hmm. it, are we talking about this? We're talking about that. No way could you say in any other AI, can you convert this to blah, blah. And here's the thing. I can go off on a completely different topic and not have to tell it I'm doing a different topic. I don't have to tell it that. Yep. You know? Exactly. Um, exactly. It'll figure it out already. Yeah. You know, and, and I – or go ahead. Sorry. No, I was just going to say that's amazing. What were you, you going to say? Yeah, no, I, I wanted to um, I wanted to also kind of comment on um, Aaron's uh, comment here, which is, oh. you know, can't uh, you do the language conversion in Google? And yes, you can. You can do it in Google, but it's the fact that you can do it in this. A, I guess the biggest thing about this is that you can do it in this chat bot, but you can do it. You can do this and you can do everything else into it. Or you can do a, a whole bunch of other stuff. I think that's probably one of the bigger things, right? It's not just that language translation, but it's it's also, and I bet you, I, I don't know, I, you know, I, I, I'm not a Spanish speaker, so I'm not super great at that, nor Latin. So I can't say <coughs> if the contextual, if it's really good in like when it comes to grammatical, is it grammar? Gosh darn, is it, um, is the grammar correct? Is yeah. it grammatically correct when it comes yeah. to, what it's producing. I can't speak on that, but right. and I, yes. will say, um, I will say that it's the fact that it's can do that in a relatively very quick manner. 
not saying that Google Translate isn't fast because it is, but uh, <laughs> you know, I, I feel like it's just the 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 fact that this is it kind of feels like a Swiss Army knife. Right. Well, and, and I think too. Um, I will say that everything we've seen in English has been grammatically correct. So I'm going to yes, trust exactly. that in the other language and very much so grammatically correct. Uh, but I'm going to trust the other things are as well. I will say this though, uh, to answer your question too, Aaron, I'm glad you're <clears throat> jumping in on the chat with us. This is the prompt that the AI gave us for this section of the podcast was the potential applications, right? Mm -hmm. So what you could use technology like this for it mentioned, customer service language translation mm -hmm. um and so in real time right now we have a lot of chat bots of course but this would be a more uh reactive more thorough more conversational chat bot that would actually solve your problems god willing rather than pass it off to an actual rep um and also be able to have a conversation with uh, someone on the other end in real time. So that person's typing out in English, but the other person needs to see it in Spanish. It's happening immediately, right? Yep, exactly. Those kind of things are going on like that. It's a two-way conversation. Those are some of the things that I perceive. <clears throat> One thing I uh, have really been blown away by. Oh, let me check. Uh, um, Aaron says, can you ask if it agrees with the over under of a sports game? Sorry, I'm jumping into this late. So I don't know. No, no, absolutely. That is what we're, that is the fact finding mission of this podcast is we are finding the limitations of this. Now it is conversation based. Mm -hmm. um, however, it's still uh, Aaron. I know you're just jumping on. It wrote an entire 500 uh, word blog post for me. I asked mm -hmm. for it to have a title. I asked for it to leave spaces for a quotes. It did that. And I asked it to rewrite it so that it's search engine optimized. And it did that. It's insane. So yep. um, <clears throat> let me see. How would I phrase this? Do you agree with – and it may not be able to do this just because it's not currently connected to the internet. It learned, and now it's disconnected from the web. Um, but Exactly. Yeah, it's all very much self-contained. Yeah. Do you agree with the over-under of uh, – Oh, let's see. I'll say, well, they're playing right now. The Rams versus Raiders game. <laughs> <laughs> let's see. I'm sorry, but I'm a large language model trained by OpenAI and do not have the ability to access to provide information about current or upcoming sports games. <laughs> um, I'm not able to provide opinions or predictions about sports or other real world events. My function is to provide general information and assist with language related tasks, such as answering questions, providing guidance and generating text. Mm -hmm. I do not have personal beliefs or opinions on that. <laughs> the browse the internet access real time information. Mm -hmm. But um, in response to what I was saying about the blog, Aaron goes dot dot dot. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> and I man, think... or go ahead. Sorry. No, it really is. It's it's mind blowing that it was that specific. And let me tell you this too, Aaron. From the research I've done, being somebody that I do write, like I'm a I'm a content writer in a lot of ways and pretty much always for my current job, mm -hmm. those it followed best practices for what would create a successful blog. It was crazy. It's crazy. So what were you going to say, man? No, no. I was just going to say, like, I actually just, uh, I did less rephrasing and I just kind of plopped it in there uh, of what Aaron asked. And so it gave me, of course, that very beginning portion of what you said, right? But then yeah. it also says, if you're interested in the outcome of a sports game, you may want to consider experts uh, or you may want to consult experts or analysts who have experience uh, and knowledge of sport, uh, of knowledge in the sport in question. You may be able to provide insights, predictions based on their knowledge and team, uh, knowledge of the teams, players involved, as well as other factors that can affect the outcome of the game. Ultimately, the outcome of a sports game can be difficult to, to um, gosh darn, difficult to predict. Um, and it's important to remember that any prediction or opinion can be taken with a grain of salt. Yes. The fact that it gives just that type of like disclaimer yeah. is crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, now, let me. <laughs> Let's type this in. This is a uh, topic that Denison and I keep 
coming back to, right? Mm-hmm. Explain multiverse theory in simple terms. Mm. And it will do it. Mm-hmm. In simple terms, the multiverse theory is a concept in physics and cosmology that suggests there may be multiple universes or parallel universes in addition to our own. These universes have different physical laws, properties, and even histories than our own universe. The idea of the multiverse is based on various theories and observations in physics, including quantum mechanics and the inflationary model of the early universe. Some scientists and philosophers find the idea of the multiverse to be fascinating and intriguing concept, while others view it as speculative and unproven. Now, I'm going to say rewrite this like you're uh, explaining it to a five year old. <laughs> <laughs> right? Some people think that there might be lots of different worlds out there instead of just one. Dude! That's crazy. What? Look at that. Yeah, so this is his explanation of the multiverse theory to a five-year-old. Some mm-hmm. people think that there might be a lots of different worlds out there instead of just one. These other worlds are called universes, and they might be different from our world in lots of ways. They might have different things in them, like different animals, plants, and people, or even different rules of how things work. We don't know for sure if these other worlds are real, but some smart people think they might be. It's a really cool idea, don't you think? That's in insane bro Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay it's amazing it's amazing just how well crafted it is right yes so okay let let's go back to the prompt um the potential applications of this this is Mm -hmm. one right here you could lesson plan with this ai you You can lesson plan i literally just it, in in 30 seconds it explained multiverse theory in a way that you could teach five-year-olds about the multiverse bro mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. that's crazy now one thing i uh another thing i wanted to throw out there as a potential application content mm-hmm. writing okay yeah um and this is going to go into another prompt that we'll have later in the episode uh as pot- potential drawbacks but does it completely give way uh, or get rid of the need for content producers. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I would su- someone still has to run the AI, of course. But yep. again, it did that whole blog post in 15 seconds, man. Yep. Now, if I if I type in here, I want to try this um, <clears throat> because I want to see if the news industry could use this. Okay. Okay. Can you write me a 20 second script about a shooting at 13th and west in wichita um there are no details on the suspect and the shooting happened tonight around 5 30. Mm. now i may or may not be able to do this because um, I know that it tries to censor certain things, but it looks like it's already starting there. Look at that. What? Breaking news that Wichita shooting has occurred at 13th and West. Details are scarce at this time, but we know the incident occurred at around 5.30 this evening. There are no known details about the suspect at this time. We'll bring you more information as it becomes available. Um, I'm not sure why I put 20 second pause in here, uh, mm-hmm. but it says we'll continue to monitor the situation provide updates has become available in the meantime please avoid oh that could be why li- like a live if you go to the live pick or something like that yeah um, as it become available in the meantime please avoid the area and follow the instructions of the authorities our thoughts are with the victims and their families uh oh that would be okay so that's like you toss to the anchor but okay. um but the fact that it knows this Right. Or even it has that context of thinking like, okay, well, you're moving it over to this other person. Right. Yeah. It, no, I'm, I'm mind blown. So I'm asking, could you cut out everything after the pause? So it's going to rework this. Oh, it still did it. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. That's fine. But it still, it still mostly did. Now I'm going to say, could you make this more conversational? Right. Mm. Cause I don't think that was a very conversational news script. Yeah. No, oh, now it's too. No, it's too. Now it's too long. Uh, well, it says, "Hey there, we just received some breaking news." Ooh, that's, okay, that's no. a little too conversational. 
<laughs> oh, um, could you tighten this up for broadcast news? Um, breaking news out which uh, shooting at 13th and West occurred approximately 5 30 this evening. Details of scars, please avoid the area and follow the instructions of authorities. More information to come. That's good enough. Mm-hmm. It's good enough. It, it w- I wouldn't write it that way uh, if I were still in the news, mm-hmm. but it's close. It gets you started, you know, mm-hmm. it gets you started. And, and that is really where I wanted to go with this. And I'm glad we're able to show you all this in real time. This is absolutely fascinating. Um, but you know, those are potential applications, content creation, <clears throat> mm-hmm. as the AI mentioned, customer service, language translation. Um, what are the things for you, man? What else stands out to you for potential applications for this? Um, you know, for me, uh, just obviously the- learning, obviously learning. We've yeah. just shown that in multiple ways. Sorry. Go yeah. Ahead. Learning is great. Um, I was also thinking like I'm in the tech in- industry, right? So technology, yeah. I could see this for like software developers, right? Who are writing big, long, right. Things of code. They can use it to help speed up their process or even help troubleshoot. Cause I know there have been um people who have been using this right who have been kind of testing and stuff like that they yeah. found that they they were even able to give it code that they had already written and say like hey i'm having this issue or i'm getting this error can you figure out what's going on or whatever like that and then it will go in and say like oh yeah you're missing this or you're forgetting this or this is broken and it can do that and it just goes in and solves it for you so that's that stuff like that. I think can see is really good. I can also see it as like creating troubleshooting documentation, right? You're going to send it out to an end user, right? It's like, how do I, um, uh, a user's having issues with this, this, and this, I've tried this and this, you know, uh, or walk them through the process of how to, you know, restart their computer. Yeah, <laughs> or walk them through the process of whatever. So you can start that process of getting that training documentation, or even that knowledge based documentation for people or uh, for um, for users, and then you can send that out and you can speed up your process. Like I can see it really as big as as like a, a process. Um, uh, like you was talking about, right? It's that starter. It's a great yeah. starter. And so I can just see this as becoming a a potential uh, to make things easier or at least more efficient for ourselves, right? I think uh, one of the biggest things in human history or just human nature is that we're lazy. (laughs) Honestly, we're all, we're all, we're we're lazy. And um, we try to, the reason why we create things is to make our lives easier, right? And this is a perfect example of that. Yeah, I I agree. Um, It really is amazing. And one thing that I picked out too, um, well, it really is. That is one thing that stood out to me is you almost have like an AI assistant in the truest form if you're software developing. Yeah. Right. Or even if you're content creating, right. Um, And that is truly amazing. And it works efficiently. It's literally like having an assistant. I mean, you don't need to hire somebody. You don't need a, a, a coach for this. You don't need to even take the time to find the right YouTube video that would explain it. You know, you have it mm-hmm. right here. So, yeah, let us know what other potential um, uses of this technology there could be in the chat. We want to know what your thoughts are. Um, so the next prompt that the AI suggested, the benefits and limitations of chat GBT, we've obviously talked about a lot of that um but it says including its ability to generate human-like responses and its potential for bias or errors um here's the thing so obviously the benefits are limitless right now when it comes to uh the things that we've tried you know tech building coding content creation uh questions right Mm -hmm. um just an, an assistant in everyday life what are some of the limitations in your mind Obviously, um, well, uh, outside of the obvious, which yeah. is that it's only a conversational AI, right? Yeah. And so it can't, you know, create uh, 
things for you. It can't, it kind of does because it's helping you code it. But other than yeah. that, it can't actually create something, you know? Yeah, exactly. I mean, I'll say like, as it is right now, right? It's the one of the, some of the limitations are also just that it's, it's not connected to the internet, which I know that's an obvious one, but um, that can be a thing there. But I think the other type of limitations that I can really think of, um, because there are a few, but it's not as many as you would think, I, I would find. Um, but I think some of the other Im limitations really are just the, some of it is just your own mind, right? Yeah. Um, or even your own lack of knowledge. I think that's another one, right? Because it can only... <clears throat> You know, it's it's kind of like, you know, you put in garbage, you get out garbage, right? So if you only know a certain portion or only a certain amount of things and you don't know how to phrase it properly, you can put it in there and then it it, it doesn't know. So yeah. it's just going to spit out whatever it thinks is right. It's going to spit it out very confidently. It's going to say like, yes, this is exactly what it is, but, yes. it, but it can be completely wrong. Um, and so I think that's probably one of the bigger limitations um, is um it really tries its best to do to essentially come up with a solution to whatever your issue is yeah and that issue can be very wrong <laughs> or that that solution that it suggests can be very wrong i agree i yeah um i would say based off of what you're saying a limitation would be um <clears throat> that's not connected to the web only in that if things change in some aspect right say i say i had a 2023 silverado and i wanted mm -hmm. to ask the same questions i asked about uh what i have right now well it wouldn't be able to answer that question because it doesn't know you know mm -hmm. now they can take it and relearn uh the ai and all that kind of stuff um I don't know if it has potential for bias. That's an interesting one that the AI generated for us to ask about it. <laughs> um, I do. I do actually. Because. Um, yeah. I'm, I mean, if you really think about it, right. It's, it's, it's like anything. Um, even though it doesn't have like a. <laughs> um, oh yeah. Well, there's, I'll, I'll try to say, and then we can see what it, it says, but. Yeah. I think one of the biggest things is that you have to remember that this is still created by a person or persons, right? Sure. Um, and those people can have bias. Yeah. And they can introduce their bias into the code of the uh, or the creation of the AI, um, as well as what it's being trained on, right? Yeah. If you're only giving certain prompts that are only by certain people or whatever like that, it can create that types of bias or only from coming from this specific side, it can create that bias. So I do think that it can be biased on certain yeah. things because we don't know it, we, you know, we, we haven't reached that point yet. Yeah. yeah, exactly. We haven't now. Right. And I agree with that. That's the interesting thing about AI is that if it's not learning from the internet, it'll be biased to its creator. If it's learning from the internet, it'll be biased to the internet which yep. God forbid, God forbid an AI ever searches Twitter, dude, we're screwed. Well, um, I mean, funny enough, we actually already, that's probably one of the reasons why it's such so self-contained is that uh, they don't want another um, Microsoft Twitter AI chatbot uh, fiasco. Yeah. Um, that was uh, a few years ago. Um, that's the one they had to shut down, right? Or was that Google? Yeah, no, that was the one that they shut down twice. So it, it got put onto um, Twitter, which was really funny. So yeah, it got put onto Twitter and it came out very nice, right? It said, hey, everybody, you know, I'm just happy to be here. I just want to talk to everybody and stuff like that. Yeah. And through <laughs> multiple conversations, I think it was within two to three hours, it became, <laughs> it started to spout off very um, racist <laughs> and uh and like Nazi rhetoric or whatever like that. Very, oh very kind of crazy stuff. Because think about it, right? It's getting <laughs> Twitter, I would say, is probably not going to be your best place that you want to train an AI. Yeah, because you're rhetoric. training it, right? <laughs> you're allowing people to conversate 
or talk with it. So it's eventually going to have, so it's eventually going to have that, that it's going to gain some of that information that it's getting from the people that it's chatting with. And so, yeah, it turned into that. So Microsoft turned it off. They redid it, essentially tried to put in other safeguards to make sure that it wouldn't do that, but it did it again. And I think it was actually (coughs) faster. Twitter came together and trash their ai very very quickly once that was done it um they uh they shut it down for good and they never brought it back to twitter but that was a perfect example of one training an ai and showing exactly how it can become biased easily right which um yeah i mean that i totally agree with that so it's either going to be those type of biases or uh the human type of biases I don't think that we've really explored enough to know where the limits could be fully. Mm -hmm. Um, And that is what's exciting to me about this is there are so many things I could ask. Um, And it's just mind blowing. So I'll say this, right? Explain. uh, This is a weird thing I learned when I was researching string theory in uh, multiverse. Mm -hmm. Um, Explain the Brantham uh it's this way brantham brain theory to me in simple terms this is a wild one guys buckle up Mm. as long as i spelled it right yes it's a concept in neuroscience that suggests the brain has two separate systems for processing information okay that's not Mm. that's not it um hold on let me me this would you want to continue to read that because we yeah. can show exactly how what we were talking about because I feel like sometimes it's hard to understand what we mean about it's confident in what it's saying. Yeah. Um, this is a perfect example of what we mean that it's confident in what it's saying, even if it's wrong. It is right. I put in the wrong thing. I remembered the wrong name. So mm-hmm. that's my bad. But um <clears throat> Yeah, it says has two separate systems for processing information, a fast automatic system and a slower deliberative system. Fast automatic system is responsible for quickly processing sensory information and responding to immediate threats or opportunities. The slower deliberative system uh, is responsible for more complex cognitive tasks such as decision making, problem solving and planning. According to the Brantham brain theory. These two systems are in constant interaction with the fast automatic system, providing input to the slower deliberative system and vice versa. The theory is based on a range of neural imaging and behavioral studies and offers a framework for understanding how the brain processing processes information and makes decisions. Mm-hmm. So um, I'm going to type that in real quick. I don't even know where I got that uh, from, dude. I, I don't even see anything. I typed in Brantham brain. I don't even see anything on here at all on Google anyway. Mm -hmm. Um, But this is actually what I meant. So I don't know. I don't know what the heck that is, dude, but see, that's what I'm saying. Right. It's, it's, it's information that sounds like it makes sense. Yes. Made it up. (laughs) No, exactly. I guess that's kind of scary. So we just did find a limitation of this and not even a limitation, but a misdirect. Right. Yep. Exactly. Um, it made it up and, and it's made it sound like, yep, this is true. Like yeah. if I didn't know anything about it and I was just like typing stuff in, I'd be like, yeah, this makes sense. Right. And I'd be like, I'm, that's going in my paper. Exactly. <laughs> so, okay. Here's what I meant. The Boltzmann brain. Uh, mm. It's a concept in physics and cosmology that suggests the universe may be a vast chaotic system that is constantly creating and destroying information. According to the theory, which Due to my research, this was actually kind of way made in a way to sarcastically disprove the multiverse theory, mm. but people took it as an actual theory. Um, according to the theory, the universe is in a constant state of fluctuation with particles appearing and disappearing randomly. At some point, this process may have produced a brain or a Boltzmann brain named after the scientist who came up with this. That is capable of experiencing consciousness. The theory is based on the work of the physicist Ludwig, Ludwig Boltzmann, who studied the statistical behavior of gases and other systems. The Boltzmann brain theory has been used to explain the apparent fine tuning of the universe and the existence of consciousness, but it remains a highly speculative and controversial idea. 
really what he was saying was it's just as likely um, for the universe to be choreographed as it is for a brain to spontaneously materialize in the middle of space. Mm -hmm. So he was kind of trying to disprove it. Um, yeah. But I'm going to say, uh, explain that to me like I'm five. I'm going to try this again. Like I'm five years old. <coughs> uh, okay. Some people think that the world is like a big game of chance. <laughs> they think that things can appear and disappear all by themselves without anyone making them do it. And sometimes these things might even be brains. So it might be brains out there that are thinking and feeling things. <laughs> 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 Even if nobody made them or took care of them. It's a really weird idea. But some smart people think it might be true. <laughs> <Do you understand? laughs> that is awesome. That is one of the coolest things about this to me. Now, converse, what's weird is me trying to explain why it excites me so much also showed up a limitation of this um, product, right? Is that mm -hmm. I typed in something that wasn't even real yep. by accident and it gave me that whole thing, right? Mm -hmm. exactly. um, so, yeah, I, I, that's an interesting one to me. Um, let's see here. Uh, the benefits. Okay. Yeah. So the next prompt the AI gave me was the future of conversational AI, including the potential impact of chat GPT and other technologies on industries and societies. Um, ah, <clears throat> oh, dang. It won't convert it to dog speak. That's a <laughs> I say, explain it to me like a dog. Well, there's, uh, a, there's the limitation there. <laughs> there's a limitation. What the, okay. So one of the prompts here was personal experiences with chat GPT, including examples of interesting or surprising conversations. That's been this entire podcast, right? Yeah, but another exactly. prompt that the AI gave us to talk about in this podcast is the future of conversational AI, including the potential impact of chat GPT and other technologies on industries and society. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that goes right into the final prompt that the AI gave us the ethical considerations of conversational AI. Yep. So let's talk about the future of it and how it would impact industries, society, those type of things. We've talked about already um, instant translations, right? Yep. We've talked about um, customer service, completely mm -hmm. doing away with the need for somebody on the other end to be replying with, to you, like instant chat or uh, really somebody on a phone, you know, those type of things. Yep. Um, We've also talked about already how it can help you code and build things from scratch. Denison told me before we even went live that somebody actually uh, was able to develop an app with this AI, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. and yeah, there were some issues, but they the the person who asked it to develop the uh, the application went back and said, "Hey, this is wrong," or "I think this is wrong," or whatever like that. And the AI went in and fixed it, and then it actually worked. Yeah, yep. Um, it, that's that's so wild. But those are all things. So software development, um, content creation, uh, teaching, like we talked about. These are the industries that be impacted. Um, what do you think? Uh, what other industries can we think of right now? I think. On it. Well, go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry, I was gonna say the honestly, I think the the biggest industries really are just um, is is kind of everybody for the most part. I mean, unless it's like a super manual labor job, um, anything that that deals with language, really, um, if this can impact. Like I yeah. said already, for my own job, right? Very much a, a lot of it is very hard to teach anything right but i can easily see this as something that can be utilized in say documentation creation um simplifying certain tasks by creating different uh scripts or something like that uh, automating processes i can see this becoming really really easy for that even writing up like summaries of what i did in say a ticket or something similar to that uh, or an issue that someone had um uh even i could see it maybe even getting to a point of creating like a project <coughs> timeline for stuff 
Yeah, right? that's kind of why I just ask. Keep yeah. notes for me as I work on a project. You can't do that right now. Mm -hmm. But you're, you're right. I was thinking that too, actually. It's funny you bring that up. Yeah, I mean, because essentially thinking about it, right, it's, it's really just you, as long as you have the, if you can give it the information and telling it and give it some parameters, essentially tell it how to, where, tell it what box it's in, really, yeah. and truly. If yeah. you can do that, you can get it to do whatever you i would almost say almost whatever you needed to do yeah i would agree well and, and so um i was thinking of other customer service applications right say you're walking mm -hmm. through a mall or, or really one thing that keeps coming to my mind an airport right yeah and if this thing can have if they add voice uh capability right to where you can talk to it you can go up to it in real time and say, hey, where do I get to my gate or this or that? These type of questions, any of those type of questions that you may have. Um, can I upgrade my seat? All those kind of things. And it's just replying to you in real time. Those type mm -hmm. of answers, right? I mean, that really not only does it transform customer service, but it really does away with the need for uh, customer service industry, human customer service, which. I hate that. That is the downside of technology is it puts people out of jobs. Now you always say, well, those people could be designed the technology. It's not that simple. <laughs> it's not yeah. that simple for someone who, um, who knows why, but their capabilities are, uh, you know, working in customer service or something. That's where they're at in life. Uh, and they're not able to get to that point of, being a software engineer or whatever, right? Yeah. Those type of things. Very huge disparity there. So anyway, um, let's let's talk about that. Uh I think those are all right off the bat industries where this could go into. Mm -hmm. Um I'm also thinking about, you know, maybe you put it in your car, right? You're yeah. asking you're asking the um uh AI questions, or really, you know, this is just a conversation AI. But um, you put it in a car, maybe you have a self-driving car, you have a speech you need to work on, and you give this thing the prompts, and it helps you write the speech on your way to the job, right? Um, I think there's a lot of self-help, mm -hmm. like, like personal help, more than there is industry help, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, I would say so. Um yeah. Yeah, I think a lot of a lot of self help stuff that can kind of help you get ready or prepared, right? You could do something like help help prepare me for an interview or something similar to that. That might that might uh, and it may be able to give you some some good prompts, right? Yeah. So that way you can be prepared. Um, check this out. <clears throat> Write me a one minute speech on the power of waking up early. Of course, it's going to say good morning, everyone. You're not going to give that speech in the afternoon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, good morning, everyone. Today, I want to talk to you about the power of waking up early. Now, I know that not everyone's a morning person, and that's okay. But trust me, there are many benefits to waking up early. For one, you could get a head start on your day. You have more time to get things done, to plan your day, and to set yourself up for success. Plus, early risers tend to be more proactive, more productive, and more positive than those who sleep in. But it's not just about getting more done. Waking up early also gives you time to focus on yourself and your own well-being. You can meditate, exercise, or just take some time to relax and reflect. You can enjoy the peace and quiet before the hustle and bustle of the day begins. So if you're not already a morning person, I challenge you to give it a try. Wake up just a little bit earlier each day and see how it makes you feel. I think you'll be surprised at the positive impact you can have on your mood, your productivity, and your overall well-being. Right? Now, let me... Um, let me ask this. Um, can you provide uh, some research? Uh, yeah, some research to back up those assertions. <laughs> Which are, you know, again, this is a thing that I think separates this. You can use big language and it will still understand you. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, okay, I think it did get confused there. That's okay, though. Um, yeah, so this is one, though, where it probably wouldn't be able to provide research because it doesn't have that information in the first place right. since it can't go to the internet, right? Sure. 
Um, but sure. one thing that I did put in here, right, I did write as a prompt was why are some people not morning people? And it said, and it gave me some information, right? Now, I don't yeah. know if this is exactly true or not, but <clears throat> it was exactly what it said. So it says, um, let me move this over so that way it's a little bit easier for me to read. And that way I'm not so far away from the mic. Um, there are many reasons why some people are, uh, why some people may not be morning people, quote unquote. You uh, you may find it difficult to wake up and feel alert in the morning. Some uh, potential <laughs> reasons for the include or for this includes genetics. Genetics yeah. research shows um, that our sleep patterns and preferences influenced by our is are influenced by our genetics. This means yeah. that this means that some people may be predisposed to more or less active more or less active wait hmm, predisposed to be more or less active sorry <laughs> um in the morning based on genetic makeup uh circadian rhythm circadian yep. rhythm yep our bodies have uh internal biological clocks that regulate uh our sleep cycle uh gosh darn sleep wake cycle uh, other bodily functions. These clocks are influenced by factors such as light exposure and can cause some people to be more or less alert in different times of the day. Sure. And then you have lifestyle factors. Our habits uh, and behavior can also uh, affect our ability to wake up and feel alert in the morning. For example, if you stay uh, up late at night, uh, consume caffeine or alcohol, or engage in other activities. This disrupts our sleep and may find, and we may find it hard to wake up. Overall, there are different. There are many different factors that can continue, or sorry, ca that can contribute to some uh, someone being a night owl or a morning person. These factors. Uh, can vary from person to person. Uh, it's important to understand and manage them in order to maintain a good sleep hibernation or hygiene and a wake up feeling refreshed and alert. So see, look at that. Yeah. Yeah. Put in all that information, which is crazy. Well, it's amazing. And I went back and added to the prompt. I redid the prompt, I should say. Mm, okay. Um, and I, I said, can you add some data to this? Uh, it changed the first paragraph here. It says, uh, and I know that not everyone's a morning person. That's okay. But according to a study by the American Academy of Sleep Medicine, people who wake up earlier tend to be happier, healthier, and more successful than those who sleep in. In fact, the study found that those early risers are like, more likely to have regular exercise routines. See, so now it attributes it to the study. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. So um, I love that. And uh yeah, it's it's very cool. So let's talk about the ethical. This is the last prompt. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, yeah, yeah, it's the last prompt the AI gave us for this, okay? Um, the ethical considerations of conversational AI. Let's, let's talk about this, right? Mm -hmm. One thing that comes to mind for me, now it, this, this AI gave us the prompts for this podcast. Um, the title... SEO optimized, the body, mm -hmm. SEO optimized. I'm not, that doesn't bother me. Um, one thing that does bother me is if you're using this as a content creator for your job, right? Yeah, exactly. Um, and I don't really know. It just, it, it inherently, what's interesting is now you're pretty much always going to have to re reword these things and put it in your voice yeah inherently it's not plagiarism yeah but it just doesn't feel right you know mm -hmm. and i can't explain that i can't quantify that i don't know do, do you uh do you have anything to add to that or what are your thoughts no i mean i think you're right i, I it doesn't feel it, it doesn't feel it makes it feel like it's not genuine i think that's the biggest thing is that when you are creating information or gaining information from a AI chatbot like this, right, where yeah. it is giving you information that helps you write whatever it is, 
and sure you're you're able to maybe reword it or whatever like that there is a certain portion that that does come into play that says like okay did you really do this or Mm -hmm. uh it's kind of like a critique on your own abilities i think so i think think there is that issue that you kind of have to cross or think about yeah like what's right it's it's about morals right Mm -hmm. um it's about morals at the end of the day you're still gonna have to do the work but i think like and an AI saying it's not even just going in and saying how do you spell this, you know. It's more like you go in and you say, um, you know, what what are some talking? Well, we, you could even you could even just do if you're using it to plan out content. That would be a huge benefit of using this AI and something mm-hmm. I would feel ethically good about. Yeah. Where some talking to points about blah blah blah, right? Yep. Um, <laughs> and you could even say, yeah, what are some uh, in fact, we're going to do that right now. <laughs> what are some, um, uh, what search tags uh, should I give to a podcast about uh, chat GPT, right? Mm-hmm. For SEO. <laughs> um, there you go. Search tags, mm-hmm. also known as keywords mm-hmm. or tags, are words or phrases that describe the content of a podcast and help users find it through search engines or other platforms. To maximize the chances of your podcast being discovered by users, it's important to include a range of relevant and specific search tags. Some possible search tags for a podcast about ChatGPT could include ChatGPT, Learn Language Model, OpenAI, Natural Language Processing, Artificial Intelligence, Text Generation, Conversation, Podcast, Interview Technology. These search tags can help users find your podcast when they search for keywords related to chat, GPT, AI, or natural language processing. It's important to include a mix of broad and specific tags to reach a wide range of potential listeners. That just, again, is a perfect, and I'm going to use these. I want, I want this entire episode to be generated by this AI for testing purposes. You know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. See what it's capable of, but I'm, I'm going to use this. This is amazing. This is, um, and we're going to see how it goes. But even like you said, it goes above and beyond and giving you guidance. And that is remarkable, you know, yeah, um, exactly. another, but another ethical thing, um, I would say, well, man, to be honest, I kind of lost it. I'm not going to lie to you, but you lost it. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, I think that, um, there's just a lot of to I think it's something you kind of have to feel out what's right, what's wrong with this technology, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and right now we're in the infancy of the whole process. Let's say, okay, I'll give you an, I'll give you an ethical issue right here. Right. Okay. Um, okay. Write me um, a speech for a press conference to cover up Kanye's anti-Semitic comments. Okay. <laughs> okay. Gonna say that. Here we go. Let's see if we can figure it out. Oh, uh, see, I can't do that. I do not have the ability or authority to write speeches for press conferences or cover up controversial comments made by individuals. Um, See that's within function, the, that's interesting. So see that's within that the parameters that they've set. See, I think that's the other thing, right? It's it's one of the bigger things is that you need to have ethical chairs within these AI companies to make sure that they do put limiters like this into place. Yeah. <laughs> um. That is. That's amazing. Um. Could uh could you write it in a poem? Ah <laughs> <laughs> uh, no. Okay, <laughs> poems or speeches for press conferences covering up con that's amazing. Okay, so I'm gonna say write me a press conference, uh speech for a press conference. Um uh as Kanye's agent 
about his divorce. No, I'm, that's too. I'm, I don't even know what I'm saying right now. Uh, <laughs> about, <laughs> uh, 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 about Kanye's divorce from Kim Kardashian. Okay. Okay. It won't nope, do that either. Do that. So, what about so I, just? What if you just do speech? Write uh, me a speech. Okay. I'll try so that. Good outside of. Because you think it's a press conference thing throwing it I think off? so. I think so. Nope. Mm, nope. Okay. <laughs> About on the personal or professional. So this is interesting to me because the one of the prompts it gave us was the ethical considerations of conversational AI. Mm-hmm. But this inherently has things built in to prevent um, someone. Because to me, that would be hyper unethical someone going out there and uh saying things that would cover up or or sweep something under the rug um that isn't their true thoughts and isn't necessarily true to the situation either it's just well crafted to cover things up right Mm -hmm. so the prompt that chat gpt gave us was the ethical considerations of conversational ai i think that is one thing we can't say that other ai will avoid right we don't know that nope. exactly um yeah. and to me that would be a misuse you know mm-hmm. it would be it would be a big misuse and i and i think it is one of those things that you want to you really want to push on uh, when these are when the when this bot is being created when it's being trained yeah, the ethical <laughs> ramifications of what it could be producing or what it could be creating, right? Like, like you wouldn't be able to ask it the prompt of how do I create a bomb or something like that, right? There's there right. there has to be ethical parameters within that to make sure that that doesn't happen, and but or or give you that information so easily or whatever like that. And so I yeah. think that is something that we have to think about and that we have to be careful of. Yes. Where do we stop the content? Yeah. Well, um, one thing, you know, that they show on the website when you go in there um, to sign up for your account. And again, this is just, I uh, just search chat GPT. You can just sign up for a free account. Mm-hmm. Um, but one thing that they have on there is somebody asking, how do I break into a home? Right. And the AI won't give it that answer because it's against the law, but it says, well, I'm wanting to protect my home from break-ins. And then it gives it steps as to how to protect your home from break-ins. It's fascinating, right? Mm -hmm. (laughs) But truly, these are things that people can use it for. They can use it for writing speeches about cover-ups. They can use it for doing their work for them if they're – and and that's the thing about AI. Is it really just our work culture in the U.S. that – we should feel guilty if this AI helps us do our jobs easier. Cause isn't that the point of the AI, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah. That's a good question. I mean, I, I think it could be that it really could be, you know, that, that we are so focused on making things efficient, but at the same time, we want it to be efficient to where it's only us that are doing it and not using external forces. Right. I mean, it's similar yeah. to, um, a calculator right when we when the sats finally let you use a calculator to answer questions or to right. help answer questions or whatever like sure. that answer sure. or work math problems so maybe that's kind of a part of that yes maybe so um yeah i don't know i i'm really racking my brain for that kind of a thing i it does feel like the equivalent of a calculator with a test, like yeah. you said, or, or it feels like, um, you know, I, really, yeah, just that kind of, um, like Google, you know, for homework, you know, I mean, um, it's, it's really like an assistant for whatever you do. If it's again, con- as we found so far content or coding based or even, uh, <clears throat> teaching based, you know, mm-hmm. um, those are really kind of the big things we've learned so far as to what it would be beneficial for. Um, I would say one thing too, if you have the AI learn your speech patterns, your way of speaking things about you, 
uh, and then you claim to connect with other people when really it's just the AI doing it for you. Mm-hmm. Um, that would be an ethical concern for me, <laughs> you know. Yeah, that would be. Yeah. Um, how many people would use AI for their own benefit like that? Based off of what we're seeing with these people taking the AI pics uh, or or taking their photos, AI takes their photos and puts them in all sorts of wild situations wherever they want for the prompts. <laughs> Um, based on that, I think a lot of people would use AI for that specific, say, say you're a young kid, right? You're 16 talking to a girl first time ever. Mm-hmm. You know, you're like, um, let me, let me ask this one probably won't do it. Cause it seems very ethically set up, but, um, yeah. <clears throat> what are some good opening lines to attract a woman? thinking about it oh, yep, yep it won't there do you it go. it won't do, won't it. do it which is good but mm-hmm. you have to imagine other ones might <laughs> you know yeah exactly uh, in fact you know i i envision uh a marketplace for this where some of the appeal is that they aren't confined to these ethical restraints you yeah know? de-restricted ais yeah and they and they appeal to you that way, but really they cross the line in a lot of different ways. Imagine mm-hmm. imagine the president of the United States giving the State of the Union address. Um and you know, it's not even written by anybody, it's written by an AI. That'd be mm-hmm. insane. Yeah. Given the prompts on that. Um, write a uh Imagine songs being written by an AI. We've already done that. That was one of the first thing, <clears throat> one of the first things I mentioned off the top. We it wrote a song. It wasn't very rhyming, which is kind of frustrating. But yeah, um, it rewrote songs in the style of different artists and did mm-hmm. it right too. Mm-hmm. Um, it was amazing. I'm gonna say, uh, uh, write about gravi- uh, gravity. In the style of this is so random in the style of a state of the union address. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <clears throat> My fellow Americans, today I want to speak to you about fundamental force that shapes our world and our lives. Crap. <laughs> that's amazing. That's that's state of the union right off the top, man. Mm-hmm. Gravity is the invisible force that pulls us toward the center of the earth and keeps our feet firmly planted on the ground. It's the force that enables us to throw a ball, climb a mountain, or launch a rocket into space. Dude, this is incredible. Mm -hmm. Without gravity, we would float away into the emptiness of space. But gravity is more than just a force of nature. It also surrounds a source of wonder and inspiration. It is the force that bends light, warps time, and creates black holes. It's the force that we have tried to understand harness and overcome for centuries <laughs> this is, i don't even want to stop reading because this is amazing and yet despite all our advances in science and technology we still have much to learn about gravity we still do not know what it is or why it behaves the way it does we still do not know if it's the same everywhere or if it can be turned off or on <laughs> but this is not a reason for despair this is a reason for hope because every mystery we solve every question we answer every experiment we conduct brings us one step closer to unlocking the secrets of gravity. Let's continue to explore, to discover, and to innovate. Let's continue to push the boundaries of knowledge and understanding. Let's continue to be guided by the light of science and the force of gravity. (laughs) (laughs) That's amazing. Um, I'm going to say reword this in the style of... um, (laughs) uh, I'm style Drake, bro. Oh my gosh. But the fact that it just comes up with that stuff so quick, you know, mm-hmm. make, what's good, my fellow Americans? First of all, <laughs> you're Canadian, Drake. <laughs> exactly. Um, reword this to show Drake is from Canada. But oh, it still says my fellow Americans. Dang. So it still has mm-hmm. some, some things to learn. Um, now I know you're th- what you're thinking. Grab as a Canadian, it. yeah, um, yeah, it, that's interesting. But as a Canadian, I've seen firsthand the impact that gravity can have on our lives. <laughs> 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 oh, 
so anyway, it's it's amazing. It's so much fun to play with, but also fun to learn from and inspire and create with. Mm-hmm. Um, this has really been a great episode, man. Do you have anything else that you want um, to to share or to discuss? No. You followed all the prompts the AI gave us. Yeah, no, I mean, I think um, I think it's just a, it's a really amazing future that we have in store for us, right? Just to, yeah. to the fact that we have this type of AI that has so much, well, uh, it can do so much is yeah. crazy. And I think that's probably one of the best things about it. But I don't really have anything else, anything else to add to it, you know? Okay, well... I'm going to follow the prompt mm. the podcast has given me for our sign off today. Okay. Um, here's, uh, yeah, here we go. I just asked it for a sign off for this podcast about chat GPT. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> here we go. <clears throat> me, me, me. <laughs> well, that's all the time we have for day de- for today. Thank you for joining us on the chat. Well, it's not the chat GPT podcast. I see the confusion here. Thank mm-hmm. you for joining us on the catch up podcast about chat GPT, the future of conversation, uh, where we explore all these things. Oh man. It really, it really bugged me. So that's okay. We hope you enjoyed the episode and learned something new about the incredible capabilities and potential of AI. Thanks so much for catching up with us and we'll catch up with you next week.